BNN Bloomberg's Amanda Lang sat down with Fairfax Chairman and Chief Executive Officer. They discussed the challenges facing Canada, among other topics. Take a listen. Canada's a wonderful country. I came here 46 years ago, and anything I've done would not have happened if I didn't come to Canada. So Canada's a fantastic uh, country, uh, a country that, uh, you know, I didn't know anyone. I came with uh, almost no money, and uh, people supported me um, uh, for my first job, for the uh, money to uh, fund Fairfax when we began. So Canada's a wonderful country. And, um, but we have to be careful because we have the United States as our partners next to us. And when they get very uh, business-friendly policies, then by comparison, um, ours are less friendly. And so if you're attracting investment, then of course uh, the investment could go to the United States as opposed to Canada. But, um, but we, love, we benefit from the fact that we're next to the U.S. So if the U.S. does well, we do well. Do you ever invest in the investment portfolio emotionally? Is there ever a, a secondary reason for the investment? If I do, there's enough people around me that'll stop me. <laughs> <laughs> so BlackBerry wouldn't be an example of kind of Canadian loyalty or old friendship? Uh, uh, BlackBerry, I got to know through uh, the founders, and I, uh, they had request me to, requested me to go on the board. And um, the reason we put a lot of money on that, in that company was because of um, John Chen. John Chen is an outstanding executive, long track record. And uh, I met him just, just like that in San Francisco, and it's like you and I are chatting, and, um, and he um, had a terrific uh, turnaround at a company called Sybase. And then he says, um, you know, I uh, bought every Blackberry uh, that existed, and I really don't want this company to go down. So I said, would you look at perhaps uh, joining the company? And he said, I've got to talk to my wife. But, but if she says yes, I will. And she said yes, and he joined us. So it was um, uh, John Chen. If he hadn't come, uh, we likely wouldn't have put uh, any money. And is it going the way you had hoped it would go? Uh, it's, it's funny in the tech business. It's, you know, you have all the downsides of uh, technology. Mm -hmm. Something new comes in, Apple versus BlackBerry, and Apple does really well, BlackBerry sales go down. But you can change that around. And so what he's done is he's gone into software, and um, he's building software now. And uh, he's stable. when he came in, uh, the company was losing a billion, as you might remember. It's broken even. They got two and a half billion in cash, and a um, ton of opportunity ahead of them. So um, uh, John, um, uh, you know, John um, in Sybase, the stock was about four, four or five dollars when he came in. Most people thought it would go bankrupt in the next year or two, and uh, he didn't. He wanted to stabilize it, and then ten years later, ten years later, he sold it for sixty-five dollars to SAP. So it's the long term, but that rate of return from five to sixty-five is a pretty good uh, rate of return. Have there been investments that you regret? Investments that you you regret your regret story you made. The ones that didn't I was going to say thousands of them, but tons of them, tons of them, yeah. So Mr. Templeton, John Templeton, who, uh, by the way, that's his, uh, um, uh, that's his um, uh, sculpture. He was our mentor to us. And so John had this terrific statement. He said, in the investment business, if you get two out of three right, you have one of the best track records. He had, he said, when he looks at his record, he got two out of three right, and he, over 50 years, he had one of the best track records in the mutual fund industry. So, that, so if you get two out of three, we've got one third, a ton of wrongs, ton of mistakes. Does it bother you? Does it bother you when they go wrong? Uh, no, I mean, it bothers me some, but uh, no, I, I, I understand one, one out of three. We to learn from them. We try to figure out what, we, uh, uh, what the mistakes were. Uh, but it's a fascinating business because there's no, uh, no right answer. You know, you buy something and then the president might go and expand and borrow too much money. You thought he was a terrific guy, but he, then he goes and expands. And all the industry dynamics change as we are having so many industries being affected by Amazon and, and other companies. So um, it's a fascinating business. I love it. Don't plan to retire. Enjoy it. And um, it's, a, it's a terrific uh, You business. never plan to retire? No. <laughs> God willing, of course. But yeah, as long as my health holds up. Um, I plan to continue to work. What motivates you every day? What motivates me is, um, Amanda, is to build a good company, a good Canadian company.
that will outlast me, located right here in Toronto. And I'm hoping uh, uh, in a hundred years that this company will still be here, perhaps in the same office. And the fellows who are running it, the ladies who are running it, will continue to run this company. Like, um, that's what we're trying to build, a company that lasts for a long time. Good principles, a good culture, treat people well. We follow the golden rule, you know, treat everyone like you want to be treated. And, uh, and I must say, doing it for 32 years, we have a very lovely culture. No complacency, we've got to continue to build on it. But, uh, but that's what motivates me. You mentioned succession. You do have that in mind. Of course. There's a plan. Yeah, very much, yeah. I, and my board has that, and my family has that. I control the company, so, um, so if I, uh, talking to you, uh, slip away, Don't do that. they know exactly what to do.